Well, I'm really interested in Alexander the Great um, and just sort of every part of, um, of his army, uh, his sort of uh, what made him successful and just anything that has to do with him basically. Uh, and in a very famous mosaic, um, there's, a, there's a Alexander portrayed with the linothorax and there's other different base paintings from around that time um, that have soldiers wearing that. And so um, I sort of, I got interested in that as well and didn't really notice the armor. So I uh, looked it up and couldn't really find anything. Saw a few references, a um, few little paragraphs that were written, um, but nothing that really described it. And I'd seen some other people online that they have made their own. Um, so I thought that, that, you know, that would be something neat for, uh, for myself to do. Well, well, the idea is to explore uh, one of the mysteries of ancient history, which is what did uh, certain ancient Greek armies like those of Alexander the Great wear for protection on their bodies. And uh, it's clear that they wore this sort of armor called a line of thorax, which was made of cloth or linen, but none of these have survived till today because they're made of cloth. So they all rotted and disappeared. So nobody's really understood them. And what the project is, is to reconstruct some of these using the original materials, glues, fabrics that the Greeks would have had, and then to take test them out to see how wearable they are and what kind of protection they would have offered the wearer. Uh, they found out that this sort of armor was probably really good. Um, linen is nice because it's about half the weight of any sort of comparable metal armor, so it would have been much more comfortable to wear. It's more flexible as well than wearing metal armor, and if you're in the Mediterranean in 100 degrees heat, you really want to be wearing something made of cloth rather than reflective steel, which would basically bake you. And when we did some of the arrow tests, we found out that it provides uh, surprisingly good protection from arrows. I was sort of expecting it to, um, to, whip, to stand up to the arrow tests. Um, you know, it, it almost had to have, to be as popular as it was, to be used as widely as it was, um, especially by Alexander and his army, because he certainly had the money um, and, and means to, to get um, you know, a more reliable armor. So if something like this didn't work, I doubt he would have worn it. I mean, this is the first uh, sort of student collaboration project that I've really been involved with in, in, an, in a major way. Um, and this one's quite successful. I mean, we actually have already had a paper accepted at the main international conference uh, for people who study the ancient world. And in January, uh, Scott Bartell, the, the main student collaborator, and I are going to go and present a paper on this. So it's real important uh, original research, and I hope to continue this sort of thing in the future. I'm happy that uh, the, the, the line of thorax is finally going to get some recognition or, or the due um, that it deserves. Anything that, uh, that's going to advance you know, the appreciation of Alexander or, or shed some new light on maybe Alexander's success um, you know, is, is great. It's been a lot of fun to work with students on this, and it's nice to be able to do uh, real original research uh, with students rather than just always sort of being off on my own doing it. I enjoyed. Um, my last semester um, tremendously because of this, because of working with uh, Professor Aldrete um, and then the other students and um, just sort of actually instead of just learning history in a textbook um, or from a lecture, you know, it was great to sort of get a hands-on approach to it. Um, and uh, I think the other students really, really enjoyed it as well. Um, I'd love to do more stuff like this. Uh, it, this, this um, Increase my passion for history. So my writing bounced. Yeah, but it must be a hole. Okay.